Hello sir, how may I help you? I'm looking for a used car with a good mileage. Oh really? Let me show you the current inventory. Oh, I like this one, this one and this one. So give me the starts of the three models I finalized. Okay. So sir, the first car which you can see over here, it gives up to 900 kilometers of range with just 40 liters of petrol. The second car will give you a minimum of 600 kilometers of range with just 22 liters of petrol. And the third one will give you only 300 kilometers of range in around 10 liters of petrol. Hmm, I'm finding it hard to decide. So, it's so obvious. Why don't you go for 900 kilometers of range? This car is awesome. I think you should go for it. Hmm. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Can we come up with a way to help out here? Let me write these individual ratios in each of these cases. 900 by 40, 600 by 22, and 300 by 10. If we do it the classical way, we will have to make all the denominators equal and then compare the values and follow such a long procedure to do all of that, that we will finally not reach a conclusion. But what if we knew how many kilometers each car can travel to do with one liter of petrol? Wouldn't that be easier to compare them? Hold on a minute. How much does each car travel with one liter of petrol? Just check all that. This car is giving you 900 kilometers of Just range. answer my question. Um, so, the thing is that uh, the first car will give you around 22.5 uh, uh, kilometers of range and 1 liter of petrol. The second one will give you 27.2 kilometers of range and 1 liter of petrol. And the third one will give you around 30 kilometers and just 1 liter. Kyo chose car 3, right? It has the maximum distance traveled with one liter of petrol, or it's got the best mileage. Now, Theo has his new car. He decides to go on a trip. He puts in five liters of petrol. How far do you think he can go with that? Now, let's use the same logic. 30 kilometers in one liter of petrol. So how many for five? What has happened? The denominator has got multiplied by five, which effectively means I need to multiply by numerator also by five which gives me a value of 150 kilometers, which effectively means if I've got five liters of petrol, I will be able to travel 150 kilometers. What if we had filled six liters of petrol instead of five? Then it's just going to be 30 multiplied by six, which is going to be 180 kilometers. Because of this value one over here, to find this unknown value, we can call this unknown value as X, we just have to multiply the mileage with the quantity of fuel. And guess what we have just learned out here? There is a method in mathematics or there's a method in the chapter ratio and proportion and this method is called monetary method. And from Theo's situation, we've even figured out the advantages for using this method for super easy comparisons. And well, if you know the unit value, we can use it as and how you like for the other values, right? Just like how we did with finding the distance, he can travel with the quantity of fuel. And what is this unit value? If we condense any ratio to a fraction such that the denominator becomes one, then we have made use of this unitary method. By the way, can you think of the most common examples of unitary methods that you see in daily life? Have you guys ever seen the speedometer in a car or a bike? It shows you things like 10 kilometers per hour, 20 kilometers per hour, 100 kilometers per hour. All of these are unit values. Why unit values? Because it tells you that in one hour, you can either go 10, 20 or 30 kilometers. If you like this video and want to watch many, many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.